Good morning again, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you guys are still having a good day. So this video is pretty quick. Uh, we're going to talk about the biological effects of radiation. So problems if you experience exposure to a bunch of gamma radiation or beta radiation or what have you. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, all types of radiation are hazardous and do have effects on biological tissue. So, and uh, even radiation that, like even an EMR, ladies and gentlemen, EMR is, is hazardous to biological tissue. So if you're going to be doing x-rays, for example, that's why you wear a lead vest. Like, heck, even like UV radiation gives you sunburn. And um, it can lead to skin cancer by causing thymine dimers in your DNA. So if you guys took Bio30, um, you guys remember talking about thymine dimers? So where the thymines, um, the two T's in your DNA, if they're side beside each other, instead of binding across on the rungs, they bind together, which creates an unsightly bulge in the DNA. Well, never mind if it's unsightly or not. Your DNA polymerase and RNA polymerase can't run across that. And you get mutations in the DNA and it leads to cancer. Anyway, that's bio 30. Okay. So any type of radiation, like especially like this, this, this nuclear radiation, it's can be devastating. So the aftermath of like the Chernobyl meltdown and the World War II of atomic bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, like the, the radiation in the aftermath was just insane. Um, so anytime we're going to be dealing with anything to do with nuclear radiation, so nuclear power plants, or if we're going to be dealing with um, nuclear medicine, for example, you have to take precautions in order to protect yourself from it. Or, and even like cleaning up after the Chernobyl meltdown, like it was in insane. If you look at like, the devastation of what happened to those cleaning up after it and how long after the bombings that people suffered from the radiation poisoning was, was, was it was just it's just devastating so several different variables um depend on how much damage to your dna and other tissues can be caused so the amount of radiation so and the more energy the radiation has, the more hazardous it is. So if you're exposed to, say, a little bit of high energy versus a lot of high energy, well, obviously, the lot of high energy radiation is going to be more dangerous. So your high energy particles and photons, they can completely mess up your DNA. So like I mentioned, those thymine dimers. Um, and primarily it leads to cancers and other harmful mutations if your germ cells or your sex cells, the cells that will become sperm and eggs, are, are impacted. Now, mutations and the different types of mutations, uh, that's Bio30. Um, but if you want, if you have any questions about more detail about mutations, let me know and I can answer those for you. Mutations are cool. And no, this is not going to turn you into Spider-Man. Okay. Uh, back home. Okay. Heck, how old was I? I was like 19, 20. I had a bone scan now before my major jaw surgery. And um, so in order to see what well, was my jaw still growing, could they actually operate on it safely? And so in order to detect this, they injected me with a radioactive isotope. And then I had to lie like perfectly still with this like detector screen, like this far from my face for an hour. And while you're, you're sitting there with this thing right there, you're, you're emitting gamma rays. So obviously lower energy gamma rays and for low amount. And then they would detect, well, where these gamma rays are going. And by determining where the blood blood is flowing to the bones, then they can determine on where the bone, if the bones are still growing. So they know where the growth plates are in the bones and what have you. So that's how they do a bone scan. And um, I didn't turn into Spider-Man or gain any superpowers. I was so disappointed. <laughs> but, you know, you're, so I, even though I was walking around emitting gamma rays for 24 hours, I didn't actually gain superpowers. That's upsetting. And the mutations they talk about, no, you're not going to turn into the X-Men. Um, so are Charles Xavier, who have you, Wolverine. The mutations just primarily give you cancer. Okay. So, uh, the comic books, they get it all wrong. 
All right, so the amount of exposure to radiation. So the longer you're exposed to this radiation is going to increase the energy absorbed by your biological tissue. So it's going to make it more hazardous, okay? And um, so with that, the amount of radiation produced over a given period of time, so the activity, it depends on the stability of that nucleus, of that element, which will then determine the amount of radioactivity it's releasing. Okay, so small amounts of radiation are less harmful than the large amounts of radiation, but it also has to, it can be a toss up. Well, what's more dangerous, small amounts of harmful or large amounts of low risk? All right, so hard to say. So, um, and the ability to ionize or convert into ions biological tissue. Now for this, it occurs when they're going to lose an electron. So remember we talked about ionization with absorbing of photons? Well, that, but in biologic tissue, so your cells. Now, when, the, when stuff's being ionized, like oh, if your DNA is being ionized, you don't want it to be ionized. You can damage or kill these cells by ionizing stuff. And then that can give you radiation sickness when your tissues start dying. I mean, just think about sunscreen. Oh, like sunscreen, now like UV radiation and sunburns. You had a sunburn so bad that your skin peels? Well, their UV radiation has killed your skin cells. And that's why your skin is peeling because it died. Um, or a first degree sunburn, which most sunburns are, it's just the epidermis that has been killed and, and peeling. But you don't want that type of damage, guys. So wear sunscreen um, and stay away from radiation. So safety, it can be improved by working with radioactive materials. So if you're going to be in, like, working in a nuclear power plant or if you're going to be working in nuclear medicine, um, such as radiation for cancer treatment um, or nuclear bone scans, like what I have back when I was like 19 or 20. So you can decrease exposure time. Well, that's easy to do. So notice when, uh, like say with x-rays, when the x-ray technician is going to take an x-ray of you, um, they are going to leave and go into a different room than, than you get the x-ray and you're done. Well, you're exposed to the radiation for a small amount of time when you get an x-ray. But the technicians who work there, well, if they're exposed to the x-rays again and again and again and again and again, then they are going to be at more risk. Okay. So increasing the distance between people and radioactive materials, so separating it. Okay. That makes sense. And increasing shielding use. So different radiation can be absorbed by different materials. Okay, and by using that shielding, you can protect uh, the people using the radiation. Okay, so this is a nice little table. Um, so the nature of the radiation of your alpha, beta, and gamma particles. Now, alpha particles, your helium nucleus, they can go through paper, but they cannot go through your skin. Their ability to ionize stuff is really high. However, the hazard is pretty low unless you eat it. So don't eat something that has alpha radiation in it. Um, and that's actually could have been some of the issue with um, places like Hiroshima, Nagasaki, Chernobyl. Some of the food that water that was coming in there was contaminated with radioactive materials. Well, you eat it and then you get radioactive alpha particles bashing around in your innards. Not cool. Uh, beta radiation, your high speed electron or positrons, um, it can go through cardboard and go about one centimeter into your body. So kind of moderate to low with a moderate ionizing ability. So it's, it's a moderate hazard. So gamma radiation, it's a high energy photon. It can go through some metals and it can go like right through your body. No problem. Zip on its way through. It has a low ionizing ability, but the hazard is high because it can just go through your body. If it only has the ability to ionize, say, oh, I don't, I honestly don't know what percentage, but let's pretend 1% of the stuff it comes in contact with. Well, as the gamma radiation is going to go through you completely, um, it's gonna be ion and it comes across, ionizes 1% of the particles it comes against, well, guess what? It's gonna go through way more than 1% than 100 particles. So it's gonna be ionizing stuff. So it's, it's not good. 
And so the best way to protect um, oneself from gamma radiation is like really thick walls of concrete and really thick walls of uh, like thick shield leads. Okay, so we've got uh, an example here. So ultraviolet radiation is a type of ionizing radiation. Is, is it also a type of nuclear? So it's ionized. So the answer here is no, it's not ionized. It's not nuclear because it's not being released from the nucleus. It is therefore not nuclear. And with this one, um, remember from um, where EMR can be produced from a previous video, the spectra, it can be produced when electrons go down to a lower energy level. Okay. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys found that video interesting. Uh, I've got a couple practice problems down here from your workbooks for you to work on. I hope you guys have a good day and no fires, injuries, or explosions. Talk to you guys later. Bye.